In this video, we're gonna look at a type of reaction called electrophilic addition to dienes. This is really similar to a regular addition reaction of an alkene. Here I'm showing one example of a pretty simple electrophilic addition to a diene. As you can see, this, this reaction generates two different products. One of them is called 1,2, one of them is called 1,4. I'll be talking about that in just a bit. The reaction that I'm showing here is with HCl. You can substitute that for HBr. If you use HBr instead of HCl, then you're just gonna be changing the chlorine to a bromine in those products. You could also use Br2 in place of HCl. And um, I'm gonna show you an example of doing this reaction with Br2, so you'll be able to see where both of the bromines end up in the products. Let's talk next about the 1-2 versus 1-4 notation. So in the 1-2-1-4 the one, one, notation um, is using the four carbons of the diene system, referring to those four carbons, numbering them from one end to the other, one, two, three, four. These numbers that we're using here typically have absolutely nothing to do with the numbers that you would use when you were naming the molecule. In this particular instance, because of the tininess of this diene, the one, two, three, four numbers are exactly the same as how we would number it if we were naming it. But if we had a larger diene, like let's say we had something, um, that's not gonna be a good example. Let me come up with a better example. If we had a larger diene like this and we wanted to number it for this particular type of reaction, we would number one, two, three, four. So again, we're just in this numbering, we're just focusing on the four carbons of the diene. We're not thinking at all about numbering for naming purposes. In the 1,2 product, the hydrogen and the chlorine of the HCl are being added to carbon number one and carbon number two of the diene system. So they're adding across to this first double bond, leaving the second double bond completely intact like nothing happened to it at all. And that's where that notation comes from. In the 1,4 product, the hydrogen and the chlorine are adding to carbon number one and carbon number four. And this causes one of the double bonds to shift from an outer position to an inner position. So in the 1,4 product, we put a hydrogen on carbon number one, we put a chlorine on carbon number four, and we move one of those double bonds into the 2,3 position. In some conditions, the 1,4 one, product is the major product. In some conditions, in other conditions, the 1,2 product is the major product. So sometimes this is the major, sometimes this is the major, but both of these products are always formed regardless of conditions. And in the next video, I'll be talking about how to predict whether the 1,2 or 1,4 is the major product. But before we jump into that, let's just take a look at the mechanisms and how these two products are formed. It's probably pretty easy for you to imagine how the 1,2 product is formed, but the 1,4 product is a little bit harder to visualize. So let's start with our 1,2 mechanism. Um, we're going to, we already know what the product is gonna look like. This is the reaction that we're gonna do over here. This is a little bit more complicated of a diene because it has a substituent on it. In the 1,2 reaction, you're just focusing on one of the double bonds in the molecule, and the other one's gonna be left alone. When you have an asymmetrical diene like this, you wanna focus on the double bond that is the most substituted. So that's this one right here. It's gonna give us the best intermediate. So that's the one we wanna focus on. And we're gonna treat this just like a normal addition reaction like you learned when you first learned about alkenes. So we'll take that double bond and we'll use the electrons from the carbon-carbon double bond to attack the hydrogen of the bromine. This is gonna break the HBr bond. We're gonna be left with a bromide ion. Um, the hydrogen atom, is it gets added to one of the two carbon atoms of the, of the alkene, and it's going to add in a way that follows Markovnikov's rule. So we want to think about how many hydrogen atoms are on the first carbon, carbon number one, and how many hydrogen atoms are on this guy. It doesn't have any. The hydrogen atom that we're adding from HBr is going to follow Markovnikov's rule, so it's going to end up adding itself to the carbon atom that already has the most hydrogens present, and that will put a positive charge on the other carbon atom. The bromide ion will then attack that positive charge, and here is the product of the reaction. The 1,4 reaction is, like I said, a little bit trickier. In the 1,4 reaction, everything is going to start exactly the same way. 
So we're going to use that best double bond to attack the HBr molecule, and we're going to form a carbocation intermediate, and I'm not going to draw the hydrogens on this time. This carbocation intermediate, because it is an allylic carbocation, it's a positive charge that's sitting right next to a double bond, it has a resonance structure. So we can take that double bond and we can delocalize it just like that into the inside of the molecule, puts the double bond right there in that position. That does cause the positive charge to be moved out onto the end carbon. So this, these two are resonance structures of each other. The bromide ion could attack this resonance structure right here, and that's where we get the 1,4 product. That's where it comes from. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, in these reactions, both of these products are formed. Depending on the conditions of the reaction, sometimes 1,2 is the major product, and sometimes 1,4 is the major product. So we might be wondering, since the 1,4 product is formed from a pretty bad intermediate primary carbocation, that's not great. What would even motivate the 1,4 product to be formed at all? What would motivate this carbocation to rearrange itself into a carbocation that's worse? Um, that's not something that we generally think about. Normally when our, our carbocations are rearranging or um, going through resonance, it's in order to make the carbocation better. The answer to this question comes from comparing the structure the, of, the, of the product of the reaction. The 1,4 product has the double bond in the middle of the carbon chain, making it a more substituted alkene. The 1,2 product leaves the double bond at the end of the carbon chain, which makes it a less substituted alkene. So what we think is that these intermediates are willing to push themselves to form an unstable or less stable intermediate because they know that doing so will result in the formation of a really good product. And let's make a note of that over here. That's what this question number four is about. The product of the 1,4 reaction is a more stable, more substituted, which means more stable alkene. Last but not least, we're gonna draw and label the products of this particular reaction, the one, two, and one, four. So here's our opportunity to see how this reaction works when we have bromine in the molecule. The first thing we wanna do is remember that in this reaction, we're just focusing on the four carbons of the diene system. So we wanna just focus on those guys right there. And I wanna number those carbons in a way that I'm starting from the end of the molecule that is the most substituted. So this first double bond, one, two, um, the double bond between carbons one and two, this is a very substituted carbon right there. So I wanna start numbering in this direction. I wanna start my numbering system from the end of the molecule that is gonna have the most carbons on the double bond. Uh, and I'm also gonna redraw my bromine just to make it a little bit easier to see the bromine-bromine bond breaking when we draw the mechanism of the reaction. So for the one, two reaction, we're gonna take that one, two bond, we're gonna attack the bromine, we're gonna break the bromine-bromine bond. We're not gonna do anything with the bond between three and four. Got this thing going right here. We wanna kinda think about following Markovnikov's rule. So we wanna put a positive charge in this position and our bromine out here. And then we're going to use the second bromine to attack that carbocation. And gonna give us this product right here. This is our one, two product. The intermediate right here can rearrange. So we can think about moving that double bond and delocalizing the positive charge. If we delocalize the positive charge, remember we wanna focus on the four carbons of the, of the conjugated system. So the positive charge is gonna move itself out to carbon number four, which is this carbon right here. We wanna make sure that we're getting it in the right spot. Bromide ion going after this guy, like that. And this is gonna be our one, four product. 
And remember, at this point, we're not predicting major versus minor, we're just drawing products. Now, with asymmetrical molecules, it is always a good idea to consider the other option for the one, two product. Um, so let's draw one more time down here and let's consider what if we did one, two addition, except for it was going to this double bond right here instead of this double bond up here. Because you never know how thorough you need to be. And I'm not drawing a mechanism here. I'm just showing the bromines being added to the other double bond right there. So this would be another one, two product.